Well, good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's afternoon in the where I live, Brisbane, Australia. It's ooh, just about five minutes to two in the afternoon on Monday afternoon. It's a chilly day here today. My hands are, are all cold and uh, and uh, it's been, um, yeah, the temperature's really dropped off. I hope you're well and in good voice wherever you are from around the world. Make sure you say hello to us all on the live chat if you're watching the stream live. Of course, if you're not watching live, then you are more than welcome to watch along anyway and leave your comments in the, no uh, in the comments section below. Um, and uh, here um, during the live hangout, we always answer your questions. And today we're gonna do that at the end of the show. So if you wanna, um, you can leave your questions um, in the live chat for those of you who are watching live. But of course, if you're um, watching this after the show and you'd like me to answer any questions, to the best of my ability, I will do that uh, in the comments section um, as per usual with normal uh, YouTube clips. Today we are going to be um, talking about the last week that I've had. I have had, <laughs> the most interesting of weeks. And I, I, I promise this is not designed to be purely self-indulgent. I do want to you know, talk you through some of the experiences of my past week, which has been so um, challenging and so enriching in the same, same sort of process that I wanted to share it all with you because I think there's some value for each of us um, uh, in reflecting on the week that I've had. I am going to be um, completely vulnerable with you um, and I very much look forward to reading your comments uh, both uh, in the live chat and we've already got uh, a number of you jumping in and, and sharing uh, your thoughts and comments in the live chat. Um, and uh, yeah, but I'm gonna talk us through and I think hopefully we'll be able to dissect my last week and give you some insight into what happens behind the scenes here at Voice Essentials. As you know, um, I'm a singing voice specialist um, and uh, I hold a doctorate uh, in learning and teaching. Um, I am not a medical doctor um, and that's gonna come into play in our discussion in uh, a few moments um, and uh, because we're going to, you know, well, Let's just dive in and, and uh, we'll talk about it as we go. I hope you'll stick around for the next uh, 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes or so, all of which won't be me talking. I do want to answer your questions at the end of the, uh, towards the end of the show. So stick around, settle in, and let's have a really great time uh, learning together. Sound check. Check one, check two. So as I said, I had a um, what could only be described as one of the tum more tumultuous weeks that I've had in recent history. I do have to take us back um, in telling you the story about my last week. I'd kind of got to go back a few um, months to tell you that in recently, probably from around about Easter, I started to engage in a number of online um, threads, online um, groups, uh, particularly on Facebook. These, were, these are closed groups um, for singing teachers only and there's a variety of them and a couple of them I was personally invited on to and so I jumped on and, and in doing so um, I found them really engaging, they're very exciting, there's a lot of really um, nerdy vocal pedagogy discussion going on. I also at the same time found it quite challenging because um, you know, I come from the era of learning to teach singing that was very mechanical, very anatomical, very biological. Um, and uh, these days, so my learning happened 20 years ago, as far as my university education goes. These days, uh, the learning is very driven um, by uh, just such a, uh, a wealth of scientific understandings, especially around the, wor the world of um, vocal acoustics and resonance. And it's, it is an area that um, is debated and talked about quite heavily in these online forums. And it's an area that 
do you know what I don't know a lot about? And so I actually, in being invited onto one of these particular Facebook groups, I um, realized that I, I, I wrote a, a piece, a blog piece, and you can jump onto my channel and check it out. It's the most recent blog entry that I made where I basically titled it, I Don't Know Everything. And if you've been on this channel for any length of time, you would know I am always owning up to the fact that I do not know everything. I am not a guru. Um, I do hold a doctorate, but that doesn't make me a genius. It means that I love learning and I just happen to have the opportunity to do that level of education. And so I'm always on a path of discovery and learning. And uh, in, in my enthusiasm, people responded to that blog post because I shared that blog post onto this particular forum. In doing so, I was, um, it, it introduced me to a number of leading pedagogues in the world, um, and it was all very exciting. I was inc incredibly enthused, and I'm still very thankful that these leading pedagogues have you know, uh, you know, provided me with that inroad to have that that one-on-one -on -one discussion, and a couple of them I'm going to be meeting up with in Stockholm in IC, uh, the IC International Congress of Voice Teachers, at which I am pre presenting a couple of uh, a, a paper and, a, and sitting on a panel. But I'm really looking forward to that that discussion and learning more about vocal acoustics. Come fast forward a couple of a couple of months into the most recent week. Now, last week. Many of you will recall that we that I posted these two videos. The first one was the bottom one, uh, tour cancelled, and that was last week's live post. Now, to to remind you, Adele has just cancelled um, the last two shows, Wembley Stadium shows, of her tour. She did it um, after having already completed 121 shows, a mammoth amount of um, touring schedule. And, you know, it's been argued it's not the most anyone's ever toured. That's true, but still, it's quite considerable. Um, and she, the reason she, it's, it would appear, now I have not spoken to Adele. Oh, surprise. Um, I uh, have not got any inside information Everything that I'm providing you um, in saying right now, and everything, in fact, that I said in my original videos, I acknowledged as educated speculation and nothing more. Um, and that is that Bell had uh, uh, quite a, a bit of chat going on, and I'm just okay. Bells, which is fantastic. Um, so um, she had done these two shows. She had to. She posted a very vulnerable public letter of apology to see some of, someone of her file coming out and saying, hey guys, two shows, my voice is simply not up to scratch. She even contemplated doing them as um, lip sync in herself, and I, I'm not saying that people who do do that are wrong, but in she felt she could not do that made the decision to, which I fully respect, um, and because earlier in the session we've had with, oh, we've got some streaming issues, I'm and that's going to sort itself out. It's, let me know if you got, um, getting, getting a nice stream, everyone. It seems it keeps going red and white, and I'm going to, it, oh, I hope everything's okay with this live stream everyone because it seems that we're getting it's going my screen is flashing flashing green and orange you can't see it but it's it's sort of giving me giving me some warnings so anyway she had been sick she'd had bronchitis in um uh in um new zealand in the preceding weeks she had been prescribed steroids to handle that I dare say to open the chest up to en enable her to breathe and for also for the her body to fight the bronchitis. Those steroids had, um, it would appear, taken their toll and she's arrived in the last two shows and hey presto, her voice has given out. Now, the, the vast majority of educated speculation around this is that the fear is she's had another vocal hemorrhage. She has a history of vocal hemorrhage um, and, and so there was just this tirade of um, commentary online 
about this. There were many people that were accusing her of, um, you know, of having bad technique and and look, and and I so I said in the in the tour cancelled video this one just here. I, I said, I don't think this is a, a matter of, well, I don't think we can point the finger and say it's a matter of bad technique. If you are doing 121 shows, um, you can't, she wouldn't have made it to 10 shows on poor technique um, on an international tour. I don't think we can label it that. I, I highlighted the fact that, look, there, you know, it's probably, it, a, a vocal hemorrhage can happen simply by stifling a sneeze, creating back pressure down through the larynx and causing the blood vessels to, bu uh, to burst. Uh, you, a, a vocal hemorrhage can happen to anyone at any time. In seeking to, to put a more, um, a more refined video together around vocal fold hemorrhage, in fact, I'd actually already scheduled this particular video and already pre-recorded it. Before any of this Adele thing happened, I had already recorded a video about vocal fold hemorrhage because one of you, one of my subscribers, had asked, hey, can you tell me more about this, this subject called, vo called vocal fold hemorrhage? And I thought, yeah, I want to be able to educate you and so that we all understand what it is. And also understand that whilst it is to be avoided, we don't want to have a vocal fold hemorrhage, it does not mean the end of a career, and Adele is case in point. She'd had a vocal fold hemorrhage at some point in her career earlier, and she's just done a 121-show tour internationally. Vocal fold hemorrhages do not need to signal the end of your singing. And so I'd made all these points. I then put, I went live with this, um, this video, and in my enthusiasm, because remembering that I had just had these really positive experiences in these face group, Facebook groups, um, I decided I would share the video onto um, one of the face group, uh, face group, Facebook groups. <laughs> Tumbling over my words and telling this story. My wife has more stories than I do, and I hope this is all coming. Um, as clearly as I want it to. Um, and so uh, in, tell um, in, in sharing this video, um, and I, I shared it saying, hey, this might be a resource to share with students. Now, remember also that my channel here at, here at Voice Essential is predominantly focused on being shared with people, oh, we've got a problem. Put your teeth in, Dan. Um, I'm looking at my... Um, for some reason, my stream is, is showing... really poor health and I don't know why um, everyone if you just bear with me for some reason the the stream health keeps is so if you just bear with me I'm hoping we're back. I'm hoping that we've been able to get back in line. If you just bear with me, I'm just trying to make sure that our that the the the, stream, the video stream is going to be okay. It's saying it's okay now. Um, I apologise. There's not a lot I can do about it. I am getting an upgrade to my internet. Hopefully in the next month or so, and hopefully that's going to solve a lot of these issues. So as I was saying. Um, the video that I shared onto the Facebook group actually um, received quite a bit of criticism. And uh, when, when I first received the criticism, 
whoa, it was really like a slap in the face. And many of the, the notes that I was given were, were what I would have referred to as um, moderate criticisms, as in no one was accusing me of, of complete sacrilege. However, um, they were significant enough for me to go, oh, okay, I really need to take notice of this. Um, these are leading pedagogues, experienced, in some cases, singing voice specialists, making commentary on my work and um and then now that was on once so that was on the one the the video at the very top of this page as you can see the vocal fold hemorrhage video the pre-scripted video the one that i had researched and put a lot of time and effort into and my really my baby the, the one down below the tour cancelled video uh, I wasn't overly concerned and because I, I did actually get some commentary back from another, another um, uh, group who had accused, uh, there, was a, there was an accusation of, of well, interestingly enough, I'm, I'm not even sure that one particular person even watched it because what she accused me of not saying was the very thing that I'd said in the video. Now, I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. But the, the vocal fold hemorrhage video Wow, it really stung. And I said to a colleague um, who, who, you know, messaged me to make sure I was okay. Such was the, the ferocity of some of the feedback. Um, and I said, well, this actually, this really stings. This, this doesn't feel good to be um, publicly admonished for um, subject matter that in the setting was not deemed appropriate. Now, again, it is important to note, my channel is mostly directed at beginner to intermediate singers, end users. It is not directed at pedagogues, other singing teachers, um, voice scientists. Um, YouTube, for the most part, is not really a platform that gives itself well to that. Now, that all being said, I do with to the very best of my ability when I first set out to do this channel and this is where you guys come in I want you to know this stuff I want you to I want to give you a, a look behind you know the Dr. Dan brand I want to give you a look into my studio the thing that drives me to do these videos I want to provide you guys with solid fact-based researched information that that cuts through the noise that you know there is so much there is a plethora of information on on this platform of youtube that is i'll just say it is wrong it's not right the research proves it incorrect beyond a shadow of a doubt now that being said and i'm i am not going to mention names today this is not about naming and shaming this is about telling you why I do what I do. So when I then got some feedback that my video was not up to date, was not up to speed with the latest information, I was horrified. It was such a, a slap to my ego that I had to really take a long, cold, hard look at myself and go, how do I respond to this? Do I do I fight back? Um, no, that would be completely unbecoming, completely unprofessional, not to mention immature, and would reek of insecurity. That is not who I want to be. And that is not what I want our channel to be. Remembering that this is our space. This is not just my space. This is yours and my space. I want Voice Essentials to be a place of um, professional standards that we can all um, live up to, that we can all uh, adhere to, and that we can do that in a respectful manner. But when it became apparent that my video, the vocal fold hemorrhage um, video um, was shown to be, have a few inaccuracies, I went, okay, I've got to listen to this. I really do have to go back and, and have a look at that. Then the, the video that I'd shared, the live cast, the, the tour cancelled video, which I shared um, at the beginning of the week, I'd also shared on a LinkedIn post, a LinkedIn group, the NATS, which is the National Association for Teachers of Singing, the Pedagogy Group, 
which has you know about 4,000 members, it too was responded to in a very negative fashion. Now, unfortunately, I do think that one of those people um, who I do actually still, even after they've done this, what I suspect has happened, I still believe they may not have watched the video. Um, that person just framed it and, and I don't think a lot of people actually went on to watch the video. But that is actually not the point. The point is, is that in this big blow up around Adele, what I in, inadvertently did was I simply added to the noise. I didn't, you know, my, my, my heart, my intention, my professional standard was to actually cut through the noise and offer um, clear information, information that didn't blame Adele, information that did um, identify how easily uh, uh, a, um, a vocal fold hemorrhage can happen to any singer with excellent technique if the settings, if the, the stuff is, is right. Not to mention the fact that and the other thing we haven't been talked about today um, or even, and I didn't, I don't think I even mentioned in the previous um, video was women are more susceptible to vocal fold hemorrhage and hey presto, Adele is a woman. The, the point being is that in both instances, in, in uh, the case of the tour cancelled video, I chose to actually pull that video. It is no longer live. You can't find it, you can't click on it. Because why? Because it was adding to noise. It was not doing the very thing I want this channel to do. In the case of the vocal fold hemorrhage video, it has been set to um, unlisted. That means people from th who are looking at the thread can still watch it because I think there is something to be learned at my expense. But nonetheless, I think there is something to be learned from us all in this. And that is, um, you, you know, in, when seeking to, to um, uh, present the higher standards, you are not always going to get it right. This is the same for your singing. You cannot expect perfection of yourself. What you can do is hold yourself to the highest of standards, which I continue to do, which is why I have responded in the way I have. And um, I have now submitted my um, a second reworking of the same script to a group of pedagogues internationally who, are, who have reviewed it, who have um, looked at it, who have offered some feedback, and I have um, implemented that feedback where appropriate. And I will be redoing that video this Thursday. It won't go live Thursday. It will go live later in the, in the, uh, in the month. And hopefully that'll all add, that'll all give itself, excuse me, a uh, little bit of a, it will all give itself to us being able to, um, you know, have a really solid piece of information of the latest and, uh, and most um, uh, correct information in regards to this topic, which is what I want all the while. I always want to be able to offer you, my subscribers, and those of you who, who don't subscribe and maybe watch from, um, watch from the outside, I want to always give you the best possible information that I am able to access and relay. Um, I've, got a, I've got a bit of a cheat sheet down here, everyone, so I just keep looking down to make sure I'm covering all the points that I want to. Um, uh, the other thing that, uh, in responding to everyone's comments on this, um, I think some people, and in fact one person in particular on the LinkedIn page, actually criticised me for the way I responded to those who were criticising me, which I was, I must admit I was, I was, you know, and that person may even be watching this video, if you are, Look, I really appreciated your sense of defence. I did. Um, it's always nice to know that there are people who want to come to your defence. And, and that, on one level, felt good. On the other level, though, when leading pedagogues, internationally um, respected and published people, make commentary around your material, you better be prepared to listen. If you are not, and if you are not able to respond respectfully and professionally to those people, then 
man, you, you, you've got to get out of this game because that's what this is all about. We are all on a learning journey. And the only way you can remain teachable is to remain pliable, to remain humble, to be able to acknowledge where do I sit in the bigger scheme of the world. And as I've shared before with many of you, I am not a guru. I don't profess to be a guru. I do not know it all. I will never know it all. Um, I am on a learning journey just like the rest of you. I may be further down the learning journey than some of you, but some of you who are watching this video are actually significantly further down the journey than I am in my mid-40s um, as a person who's only been teaching for 20 years, and I purposefully say it that way, only been teaching for 20 years. There are people who have got double and triple that amount of teaching experience, and I must tip my hat to those people when they step into my space, even onto my channel, and say, hey, you might want to re-look at this. When I hear that leading pedagogue say that, I've got to listen to that. And I want you as my subscribers to know that I will always listen to that. But moreover, I'm not only going to listen to the rebuke of leading pedagogues, I also want to make myself, and I've said this to you all before, I am accountable to you, my community. If you see me deal harshly with someone, if you see me respond in a manner that is not appropriate, if you see me present a piece of information that you know and you can um, uh, cite as being incorrect and you can direct me to the source of the updated information, I am going to listen. I am not one of these people online that is going to, you know, come hell or high water, pitch a flag and, you know, um, just present, you know, what I think and what I believe because what I believe... Remember a few weeks back, we, we actually, I actually did a whole discussion on don't believe everything you think. You know, I, 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 I'm hoping that this is coming across that I really want to <laughs> practice what I preach. I want you to practice what, I, what you preach. Being a mature artist, being a mature singer is more than just having a mature voice. It's also having a mature psyche, having a mature emotional setup so that you are able to grow and continually artistically develop. Um, and uh, so let me just come down to here. Um, a few more points that I want to make and then I want to come across to your questions. Hey, if you've been enjoying the discussion, make sure you hit the thumbs up. Also, don't forget to leave your comments in the section, uh, the, your questions. I'm going to answer a couple of questions as we finish off a little bit later um, in the, the commentary. And I, I want to um, answer your questions um, to the best of my ability in a moment towards the end of, the, um, of this post. Um, uh, where oh, I've, I've, the section I've got written down here is where to from here. Um, I think I've actually covered a lot of it. Um, only to say to you guys, from now on, what you're, what you're going to do is you're going to see on my videos, firstly, I want to commit to you, uh, this, this whole circumstance has cause, causes me to want to redouble my efforts to the, the core drive of my channel. And that core drive is I absolutely want to provide you guys with the latest, most up-to-date research that I can get my hands on. Am I going to make a mistake again in the future? You bet your bottom dollar I will. But when that mistake is found, when someone acknowledges it, you know, I will, so when someone points it out, I will firstly, I will acknowledge it. And where necessary, I will respond in a manner that either puts a, and I've done this before, puts a note in the sections, uh, the description section below to correct myself, or, you know, in the case of the vocal fold hemorrhage, I will redo the video. Because in the case of vocal fold hemorrhage, look, there were just too many of these mediocre, these, these things that were wrong that, that for me to leave it as one setting, and I, I ended up having this, I started out by creating a list in the description section. It was up to like 0.5, and I thought, no, nah, no, nah, this is not the standard we want to achieve here at Voice Essentials. We want a much higher standard. And in keeping with that higher standard, the other thing I want to do is from now on, when the video is appropriate, I am going to put a reference list 
an academic reference list in the description section. Now, for many of you, that this reference list will not mean a lot and it doesn't need to. Um, it is simply a way of me citing my sources that I've used to research. Now, I've always done this. When I, when I do my scripted videos, I have, as many of you know, and in fact, I think I can show you, there is, over there in the corner, is my, um, my library. That is um, a part of my, of my library of um, singing texts. Now, um, it is continually growing. I'm continually reading. And so um, I'm always drawing on that library to bring you the information. And hopefully from really, because um, you know there are, there are good books and there are not so good books. And so I'm always trying to draw from the really great books, the really highly respected text. So I've always been doing that. What I'm going to be doing from now on is I'm going to be putting in a video, for example, a video like the, the new vocal fold hemorrhage video that will come out later in the month, I will put a detailed reference list um, so that you, and particularly those pedagogues who may be watching on, may, may not be a part of the channel, but may be watching on and want to know, oh, where's he getting this information from? they will have the opportunity to go directly to the text and see that, hey, Daniel's not making this stuff up. There it is in the, in the text and they can, um, they can know that the information that I'm providing has a source. Um, and in one particular case, for example, um, one of, my, one of the, the pedagogues who questioned me over my uh, video and did it so, in such a gracefully um, beautiful way, did it via a private message, not on a live thing, which I so appreciated. It really challenged me over, actually there was a, a, a second edition text to one that I had quoted in the first, and he identified that in fact, the quote that I had used in the first um, vocal fold hemorrhage video had actually been removed from the first edition and was no longer in the second edition. Interesting point that suggests that the author had updated his own knowledge and therefore the quote that I was using was out of date. Fabulous. This enabled me to go, wow, that's super interesting. Remove that old quote. Let's go looking for a different quote that is far more um, rigorous in its academic um, stature. And that's what I've done and, and what have you. So that's important. Um, uh, so I've put a reference list in there. And as I said to you, I remain accountable not only to, um, to other pedagogues, but I remain accountable to you, my channel, because look, you know, we want to build a really solid foundation community here. And I really hope that we uh, can continue to do that. I believe we are doing that. Right now we are, we're just, we're, I don't know, 50 people shy of 17,000 subscribers. In the big scheme of YouTube, that's a drop in the ocean. I understand that. But we are gathering some momentum as a community that really want to access excellent research-based, fact-based information. And I know that's why many of you hang out here and I really appreciate that you do. And I love being a part of our community. Um, and, uh, and I hope, as the person who does post the videos, that I can continue to live up to the standard that I know you are searching for and I know that I want to uh, continually adhere to. So there you go everyone. I hope that, you know, look it has been a crazy, crazy week. I lost sleep, um, you know, I, I was responding to, to complaints and feedback and just, you know, I was waking up thinking about it, but it's all for the better. And uh, I know I'm going to look back on the last week and go, do you know what? That was a significant growth moment for me and for us as a channel. And, uh, and I know I'm going to look back on this period of time and be really thankful um, that whilst it was hard, and who knows, maybe there's more to come um, because you know people continue to comment on these threads. It was hard, but you know, really worthwhile. Uh, so there you go, guys. I really hope that's, um, that's given you some insight, not only into my last week, but also the channel 
and why we are here. Let's jump across to um, many of your questions and, uh, and I will do my best to answer many of my questions. Uh, uh, now, da 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 da. As you can see, there's a there's a lot that's been going on here. Um, uh, Gavin, it, rainy in New Zealand. What's new, Gavin? <laughs> that's unfair. I know you do have sunny days in New Zealand, but you get your fair share of rain by virtue of where you are in the globe, right? Um, that was a that was a little bit of an Aussie dig at, a, at, at you know my my brother across the ditch, everyone. Um, Gavin's asking, how do I approve, uh, how do I improve my agility? Um, agility comes from being able to manage your tension and manage your tension, your air, basically your air to muscle ratio, air to muscle ratios. If everything's tight. You can imagine trying to move a tight voice. It's not going to move with agility. If you've got a voice that has muscular freedom and that has that sense of ease and balance and, and, uh, and it will be far more agile um, and uh, doing agility work. I've got one exercise on my exercise CD um, uh, where there's a link in the description section below. Um, there's one exercise on there that I would class as an agility exercise. It's track. Oh gee, deary me. I think it's track 15, exercise 14. And it's all about creating um, uh, accuracy across those moving notes that are moving at quite a pace. Um, and then also, it doesn't give you a lot of breath time and in fact it equates at 120 beats per minute it equates to about a second and a half between each phrase each complete phrase and then go up it's quite challenging um, and so but that's all about having that right flow of air so that nothing's locking up and creating tension um, da -da 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 -da, going down here um, so much, so much discussion today this has been fabulous and I hope um, you've uh, you've all got something out of out of what I what I purposed to be a vulnerable um, expression of my last week. Um, Phillips, laugh out. I can practice and sing like a pro inside my room, but every time I go outside of my room, I can't sing even the simple notes. Why, why, why? Performance anxiety is an interesting thing, Phillips, and I would encourage you to go looking for opportunities to slowly but surely desensitize yourself to exposing your voice publicly you know um, there are it there is there I think there are a lot of great voices in the privacy of bedrooms and in the privacy of you know shower receptacles and but when we then have to take that and place it in front of an audience that can be quite an interesting challenge in fact I have two studio performances here for my for my private students and one uh, two a year we've just had one and it's, they're generally done by my amateur students. Um, professional students don't need this sort of performance experience. But uh, for my amateur students, um, I always say to them, there are so many things that cannot be taught in the studio. Experiences that I cannot, you know, conjure up within the four walls of my, of my tiny studio. Some things can only be learnt on stage in front of an audience. And part of that is the managing of the management, learning to manage performance anxiety. And so, Philip, I would encourage you to, to look for opportunities to perform in front of encouraging groups. And, and I use, in my studio, I use the private, um, the, the, the public performances, the student performances, which are incredibly warm and encouraging and supportive to my clientele to start getting them to take that step. And many of them have then gone on to find themselves at um, open, uh, open mic nights, which can be fabulous, live uh, doing um, home concerts. It's a whole range of things that you can do before you then step into more of a professional setting. Um, and uh, hopefully by that point, you've kind of been able to work through some of your performance um, anxiety. Um, coming down here. Uh, Nathan S. Hello, I was wondering why in my opinion I sound better belting like on a chorus, but if a softer verse I sound strained like I need to sing louder to do 
to do. You know why this is. Um, uh, Nathan, singing quieter is much harder than singing louder. It is one of the reasons why we often see um, on TV talent shows big, bold, brassy voices that actually then if you try to get them to sing quietly, the voice really struggles because when you th just shove you know, uh, air pressure through the larynx, the larynx will often respond in quite a primal way, not necessarily the best way, but a primal way that just goes into la, yeah? A, and a lot of, you know, bracing and muscular tension and high subglottal pressure. But the moment you then want to sing quietly and you want to have the vocal folds coming together in a far more balanced way, the larynx has to work in a, in a, with, with uh, settings that are far more nuanced than just shoving air through the larynx. And so learning to sing quietly is actually, for most people, much harder than learning to sing loudly. And I would be always encouraging you yeah, to actually always pair back the volume. Whenever I have a, a, a big voice step into the studio, and often a voice that has not received a lot of training, it's a bit like a wild stallion, you know? I hear a very exciting voice, but I also hear an unruly voice, a voice that doesn't have a lot of uh, control and discipline. And so teaching that voice, whoa, bring it back. Let's, let's break this voice in. Let's learn how to focus and manage that, that amount of um, energy and let's focus it towards something that is going to be far more nuanced and far more um, artistic as opposed to just sheer push and drive. Um, I'm going to come down here because there's been a, a really active um, discussion. I'm jumping over a lot of comments here. Um, thank you for those of you who, uh, who have, have stuck around for the conversation. Um, uh, coming down, don't forget, leave your comments. We'll, we'll probably only answer a couple more and then we're going to call it a day. Um, uh, coming down, hi, ah, Nigel. Hi, Dr. Dan, I have a question. How do you become a famous singer and how do you promote your singing or talent? Uh, um, becoming a famous singer, look, to be honest with you, that... I'm, I'm not driven to, to, towards trying to encourage fame in my singers. Fame doesn't really interest me. I know it interests many people. Um, I think fame, um, if, it, if it happens for you, then it brings with it a whole set of challenges. And we might actually finish on this for today. Um, and uh, and we can you know talk to your talk to to other questions um, in future future videos. Fame brings with it a whole range of challenges. Take for example the week you know that Adele has just had. Now, if you or I cancelled a couple of concerts at our local pub, um, you know we might have a, an unhappy um, you know bar owner on our hands and we may never get booked there again if that's how they choose to respond to it but nonetheless the reality of it's rather contained if you do that and you're Adele because you're famous you are so vulnerable to people's commentary um, innuendo perception remembering that online perception is the truth Facts are not truth online, unfortunately. It's a, I've become prey to it this week myself. And not because I'm famous, just because I, I, put my, I probably put my video in the wrong places. Um, fame is not... Um, fame, fame brings a high cost. You know, and, and if fame is where you arrive, then I sincerely hope that you have good people around you to help you manage that fame. What I would want to encourage you towards, I'm just coming back to, I think it was Nigel. Um, what I would want to encourage you towards Nigel is don't worry about fame. Don't worry about whether you're talented or not. Just sing. 
yeah? Whether, whether it be starting your bedroom in your shower, whether it be at a open mic night, start developing your human birthright to sing. That's what this is all about. This is not about becoming famous. This is not about, you know, being the most talented. If, if you're into that, can I be honest and say, I don't think Voice Essentials, and Nigel, I'm not saying this to you. I'm saying this to anyone who would be watching. If you're into that, Voice Essentials is probably not the right space for you to hang out in because that's not what we're into here. We are into encouraging one another in the development of our voice. And, uh, and because I don't, I don't believe singing is, is something that only the elite should do. I don't think it's something that only the Adele's and only the, the, um, the uh, who is he, um, Ed Sheeran's, that only the, the Bill, uh, Bruce Springsteen's and the, you know, Whitney, I, I don't believe that they're the only people that should be allowed to sing. I believe all of us have the birthright to sing and that we should, if we want to. There's no, I'm not saying that everyone has to. I'm saying we all should be able to. And so, um, uh, Nigel, I would encourage you, for the moment, try it out. Put the idea of fame on the shelf for a moment and just focus in on the development of your voice. The channel here is designed to help you along that pathway. I, I wanna state again that as I have many times before, you, you know, learning to sing online using channels like mine will take you so far, but at some point, you will need to step into a studio with someone that can, you can work alongside who can then diagnose and correct live, yeah, with you, uh, and that will then take you the next step. Guys, I really hope today has been um, beneficial to you. Um, I hope, uh, for those of you who may have gone, oh, where did those videos go from last week? Now you know. Um, they have, well, I haven't actually removed them, um, but basically you can't find them. They're very difficult to get to. Um, well, in the case of, in the case of, let me remind, let me go here. In the case of the tour cancelled one, it has been set to private. You can't get to it. And in the case of vocal hemorrhage, it's been set to unlisted. Um, and so it's been removed from all searchability. Um, and I'm thinking that I'll probably set it to private once I publish the new reworked version um, toward in the next couple of weeks. Um, can I encourage you, please watch the new version. Um, in the, in the, the words of one of my uh, very helpful pedagogue friends, um, uh, he said, uh, the video, the, the scripts are night and day, um, which, is, it, which is very flattering um, that he perceives such a difference. Um, I leave it to you to make your own assessment, but I do want you to have a watch of it because there is some updated information in it that I really think will add to your understanding about vocal fold hemorrhage. Of course, if this is the first time you've ever been, uh, ever watched one of my videos, well, you've probably already figured out this was very different. Um, I don't normally indulge um, the, the, the online time like we have, but I hope um, the indulgement was of value. I hope it's given you insight into the channel. And, and if this resonates with you and why we, we have this channel, then hey, I would love for you to subscribe and join what a community that, look, I love this group. Um, such, a, such a positive, um, proactive group of people. Um, and uh, we would love for you to join our numbers. Until I see you in the next Voice Essentials video, I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.